Imagine a country where people are used to being connected wherever they go, and information moves at the speed of light. It's a place where you can make phone calls from deep underground in a speeding train, where you can watch seven channels of live TV on your mobile phone, and where the government wants every home to have an internet-connected robot by 2010. Welcome to South Korea, a country which has set its heart on leading the world in the new technologies which are going to shape all of our futures. And they're already pretty well placed because just about everyone here has got the broadband internet coming into their home at breakneck speeds. Much of the population here is packed into giant apartment blocks. That's made it easier to pipe the internet to them. Nearly four in five homes has a broadband connection, and they can use it for everything from downloading films to simple web surfing, because the typical connection is 20 to 50 times faster than in the UK. Young Koreans are now demanding this kind of internet access wherever they go. A designer at the electronics firm Samsung says their expectations from technology are getting higher. They want it to be connected with um, multimedia all the time like game, TV, news kind of stuff. They want to get it right now. Now South Korea is going further. It's taking the high-speed internet and making it available everywhere, wirelessly, right across this city. By June, a new network will be up and running, sending wireless broadband signals across the South Korean capital. They call it Wibro. Right now, it's being tested aboard this bus. The idea is that you can get broadband internet access even when you're traveling at 60 miles an hour. So you could download last night's football or play online games on the way to work. Some local residents have been invited to come and try it out. This woman is watching a popular Korean soap opera. You can do many things, right? Like you can play games and you can watch TV and you can read books from internet and you can read comics, right? So... So you like the idea of it? Yeah, I like it. I like it very much. Whether anyone really wants to pay to be connected on the move is another matter. The Koreans see all this as just one more step towards their vision of a completely networked world. Hello, my name is Yubi. This is a future house which is intelligent and convenient. They call it the ubiquitous dream, and this home of the future is designed to show what it could promise. Come home and your TV plays messages from people who visited while you were out. And then there's that internet-enabled robot the government wants to put in every home. What can it do? Well, it can greet visitors to your door with a song. Some of these futuristic ideas may never catch on, but many will. And South Korea is determined to lead the way. Rory Catlin jones BBC News, Seoul. Now this is a Korean vision of the home of the future. It's all controlled by this wristwatch, controls everything. So immediately I come in, the blinds have just opened. Now everything in my home is now commandable via this watch and through this screen. So I've come in, I'm going to get my messages on the screen. Now I want to watch a movie. Movie. So here it comes, and the lights are going down. Now there's been talk before of internet-enabled fridges, but they say this is the real thing. This is really going to network with your whole house. Let's see how it works. So, for instance, I want to cook a pizza. It's going to give me a recipe. Yeah, this is what I do. Fine, I've got the idea. I close that now. And My ham has been expired. Please check the date. Oh dear, it's warning me that the ham is uh, past its sell-by date. Now here's the ham. It's not actually got anything written on it to that effect, but apparently it's got a chip inside it which tells us uh, that it's reached its sell-by date and I can now order it from the supermarket on here. When I press on here, this will be waiting for me at the supermarket when I go and do my shopping. Now this looks like the normal sort of pin board a lot of us have at home, but these are digital flyers, digital advertising, and if I stick this on the board, it's an advert for a concert, this one, uh, something very special will begin to happen. <laughs> I'm 
got any information about the concert in audio digital form. Now I'm about to go out. Here's my magic mirror, which also controls my wardrobe. Today's schedule. You have three schedules. Please check. Weather. Let's see what the weather's like today. So nice and sunny today. What do I want to wear? Fashion. So it's chosen me this shirt. And if I go in the wardrobe here, I think the shirt will be here. I'm not quite sure it's me. So here's the shirt. And it's now telling me uh, what I should wear with the shirt. It knows what's in the wardrobe and it knows what goes with it. Well, I rejected the check shirt, as you can see, but I'm now on my way out of the digital home. And while I'm away, it's going to clean itself. Turn to out mode. Cleaning commence. It's a densely packed country with 48 million people leading very busy lives. But South Koreans are spending more and more of their time in cyberspace. Many have become obsessed with SciWorld, a website which has become essential to their social lives. A third of the population has joined the service, which invites them to create an online persona. This is me. So which, which is your one? This is me. This one here? Yes. He's wearing a gas mask. Gas mask. Is he a soldier? Yes. Wu Jae-on is among 90% of Koreans in their 20s now using SciWorld. When you join up, you're given a so-called mini-room, where your online friends can come and visit. At first, the room is bare. You then pay real money for virtual furnishings to make it look better. Jae-on showed me round her mini-room. So Jae-on, here we are in your lovely mini-room. Mm -hmm. What can we see here? Uh, this is all me. My, all these figures are yes, you? Yes, yes, working, uh, exercising me, and me with the sign, I love you. And this is my husband and me. And this is my palace. And what, why have you got a palace there? Because I want to live like a princess. At SciWorld Mission Control, they've watched the traffic and the profits mount up as users pay for more and more virtual goods. I'm drinking wine here. This manager, with his own mini-me, claims SciWorld is giving people a better life online. It's like uh, how you want to be, and how your friends like to be, how your so society likes to be, and, that's the, and also they can express their dream. Young Koreans aren't just running their social lives in the virtual world, they're completely obsessive online gamers, and the best of them can become superstars. What's causing all the excitement? Well, actually, it's just two impassive young men playing a game called StarCraft. It's going out live on one of two TV channels which show computer gaming 24 hours a day. Professional players earn big money and the devotion of young fans. A country where even the fish pond is stocked with digital carp is a testbed for how technology will change things. If South Korea is anything to go by, more of us could end up leading virtual lives. Rory Catherine Jones, BBC News, Seoul. It's a country where you can get your news from dozens of different sources. But many South Koreans have little confidence in the traditional media to give them the full picture. Thanks very much. Now, who do you trust to bring you your news? Should it be professional reporters like me, or can anyone do it? Well, here in South Korea, there's a revolution going on. It's called citizen journalism. Here's the hotbed of that revolution, the Oh My News website. It looks like any slightly scruffy newsroom, but all the news comes from citizen journalists. Thousands of untrained people in Korea and around the world who send in about 200 articles every day. Citizens can be reporter if they have a story to tell to, to the audience, and which is strong and solid, it, it deserves to be heard. 
So what makes the stories, which sometimes include video footage, different from the established media? Well, in the case of Dr. Wang, the Korean scientist who faked his research into cloning, Oh My News claims it was always sceptical and that a citizen journalist with a scientific background gave it an edge. The site also claims it's been instrumental in uncovering corruption stories which have seen some of the bosses of Korea's biggest firms arrested. And it's not just weighty matters. There's coverage of English football's little dramas, written by a citizen journalist whose real job is in the Korean civil service. He gets a small fee when his story makes the front page. When you think of the time I spend actually writing my articles, the money is very small. But I want people to know about my stories through the internet. But the amateurs making news in South Korea believe they can beat the professionals at their own game. And with more people getting their news from the internet, they may stand a chance. Rory Cutlin-Jones, BBC News, Seoul.